people learned to use levers in ancient times. They applied them for moving great loads with the help of relatively small force. What's more, a scale beam is also a lever, by means of which one can balance up different loads. Let's take two equal loads and suspend one of them at a distance of 5 units from the lever's axis. This distance is called a load's arm. It's evident that the second load should also be suspended on a 5-unit arm. We can see that the loads balance each other up. And what should be the distances from the lever's axis to the loads of different weights for the lever to be in equilibrium? We know from experience that the arms should be inversely proportional to the loads. For instance, let's take the loads of 7 and 3 units. Let's suspend the 7-unit load onto the arm of 3-unit length. Then the 3-unit load should be suspended onto the arm of 7-unit length. We can see that in this case the lever remains in equilibrium. Let's solve the following problem. The two loads of 3 and 5 units are suspended by the ends of a weightless lever. The question is, by what point should the lever be suspended for it to be balanced up? The load's ratio is 5 to 3, so their arm should have a 3 to 5 ratio. But 3 plus 5 makes 8, so we divide the space between the loads into 8 parts and add 3 parts to the 5 unit load and 5 parts to the 3 unit load. And so we have found the load's gravity center. This is where the lever has to be suspended. The great ancient Greek mechanician Archimedes used a lever in a great variety of mechanisms. But he was not only a mechanician, but also a geometrician. So he pondered a possibility to prove the law of the lever with the help of mathematical reasoning, like a geometry theorem. Here's the proof he came up with. There are 10 loads suspended on this lever at equal distance from each other. 3 yellow ones and 7 red ones. Let's gather up the yellow loads into a group with the help of a light plank. Now we do the same with the red ones. The equilibrium still stands. Now comes the most exciting part. We cut off all the threads except the central ones in both groups. The liver's equilibrium still stands. So we can see that 7 loads on a 3-unit arm balance up 3 loads on a 7-unit arm. We have shown how this proof works on a particular example. But general reasoning for any number of loads is done in the same way. Let's repeat Archimedes' proof. We divide each half of a lever into 10 equal parts. We suspend 10 loads onto the lever and gather them into two groups, one of them containing 3 and the other 10 loads. We attach the loads within a group to a plank and then cut off all the threads except the central one. Both the main lever and the new ones are still in equilibrium. Let's see why the loads turned out to be inversely proportional to their arms. Each arm of the lever was divided into 10 parts. We have removed 3 outermost parts in the group that had 3 loads and 7 parts in the group containing 7 loads. So there are 7 parts out of 10 remaining on the left and 3 parts remaining on the right. Now we perform the final action. We replace 3 loads with one weighing 3 units and 7 loads with another load weighing 7 units. So it turns out that a 3-unit load is suspended by a 7-unit arm and vice versa. It goes without saying that this proof will stand for any other ratio between the loads. This is a lever. There's a load suspended on one side of it and nothing on the other side. Nevertheless, the lever is in equilibrium. How so? We mustn't forget that the lever's beam also has some weight. When we suspended the beam by its central point, it was of course in equilibrium. When we do so by another point, 
its gravity center outweighs and moves downwards. To balance it up, we have to suspend a load on the other side. We can even find out what the weight of the beam is. The load's arm from Mach 2 to Mach 5 equals 3 units. The beam's arm is from its gravity center to its suspension axis, which is from 0 to 2, so it equals 2 units. The beam's arm is 1.5 times shorter than the load's arm, so the beam's weight is 1.5 times greater than that of the load. Let's solve one more problem. The beam weighs 3 units. A 5-unit load is attached to one of its ends. The question is what point should the beam be suspended by for it to be in equilibrium? Let's place the load equal to the beam's weight in its center. Now there are two loads weighing 5 and 3 units. It's clear that these loads' arms will have a 3 to 5 ratio. 3 plus 5 is 8. Let's divide the distance between the loads into 8 parts and add 3 parts to the 5-unit load and 5 parts to the 3-unit load. Thus, we have found the system's gravity center. This is where the beam should be suspended.